and I know I'm probably opening a can of worms with this, but because there's clearly staked lines in this conversation that I'm going to bring up, but when we start getting into quantum computing, guys like David Schwartz will openly talk about it, and I, pre I like his perspective. You know, the, there's, a, there's some folks that believe that some of the cryptographic encryption will be hackable once quantum computing comes online. Again, it's not something that I've gone down a big rat hole on. David Schwartz has talked about it. One of the things he talks about is um, you creating a backdoor in a cold wallet if you do both a send and a receive because it leaves a footprint. And there's a people a lot smarter than me that may be listening to this. If I'm getting this wrong, please forgive me, but I think high level I'm covering it. But if you take tokens and just put them onto a cold wallet and just leave them there long term, don't, don't touch them, pull a little Raul Paul, if you know what I mean, Yep. and just let them sit. David Swartz will tell you that's a quantum safe cold wallet. But what he also says is if you do a send and receive, that leaves a breadcrumb or a back door, and a quantum computing system would be able to hack into a wallet. I don't know. All I don't right. know. But what's been interesting to me is over the last year, even tonight when I was on LinkedIn reading, there's there's a lot more conversations starting to pop up down about quantum computing about how that tie how the it's going to be the tie-in i believe and again this is just my understanding of it it's going to be the tie-in for the new style of computing that has to interact with web3 or you know cryptography yeah um, and crypto not just tokens but everything about it 